The CDC is reporting that the U.S. has high community transmission. 62% of counties reporting major spread of the virus. And as the Delta variant surges, local governments are pushing to get more people vaccinated. Dan Abrams, Dr. Richard Besser standing by to talk about the legal and medical implications after this report from Eva Pilgrim. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, George. With a growing number of cases of the Delta variant, officials are scrambling to do something to tamper it down. With lagging vaccination rates, we are now seeing new mandates in some workplaces. Either get the vaccine or undergo weekly testing or don't get paid. This morning from New York to California, the first vaccine mandates for government employees. Officials trying to crack down as cases of the Delta variant climb. New York City announcing it will require all city workers, including public school teachers, get vaccinated by mid-September or face weekly testing. It's quite clear the Delta variant has changed the game. This is about keeping people safe. The city warning that workers who don't comply won't get paid. New York's firefighters union vowing to fight the new rule. We stand firm that a non-FDA approved vaccination is a personal choice. In California, the governor mandating vaccines or weekly testing for state employees and 2 million health care workers. And President Biden announcing the VA will mandate vaccines, the first federal agency to do so. Veteran Affairs is going to, in fact, require that all docs working in that, and facilities are going to have to be vaccinated. This as pressure grows for mandatory vaccines for health care workers. More than 50 major medical organizations, including the American Nurses Association, calling vaccines an ethical obligation. You know, we want to wipe out this, uh, you know, this virus as quickly as we possibly can. And as health care providers, it is our responsibility to protect the health of the public. As public health officials battle vaccine hesitancy across the country, the FDA is now asking Pfizer and Moderna to expand their trials in 5 to 11 year olds to include more children in hopes of better understanding any potential rare side effects like the heart issue seen in older patients like 16 year old Noah Hires. He was diagnosed with acute myocarditis after getting his second shot. It was it was really unexpected, though. I, I would have never thought that something was seriously wrong. His yeah, mother seriously. saying his symptoms have already resolved. She thinks parents need to know what to be on the lookout for. I would still say all day long, you know, the children have to have the vaccine. I think the more information that we can give to just make sure we're all well informed and we know as parents what to watch out for. And it seems minimal in comparison to what it could be, the tragedy that could come if you didn't get the vaccine. And it's important to note that these complications are extremely rare. Now, as for when we can expect to see the results from these clinical trials in younger patients, Pfizer telling the Washington Post they haven't changed their timeline. They are expecting to have their results for 5 to 11 year olds in September. As for Moderna, they are expecting their results sometime in winter 2021 or early 2022. Michael. All right, Eva, thank you so much. Joining us now is Dr. Richard Besser, president of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and former acting director of the CDC and our chief legal analyst Dan Abrams. And Dan, I want to start with you and the legality of vaccine mandates. If cities can mandate teachers get the vaccine, vaccine could they mandate kids at the public schools to get them also? So typically this is done at the state level. In most, most places, you would need the state legislature effectively to say, we are going to require vaccines. So far, no one's doing that. Now, the difference here between the typical vaccine, measles, et cetera, is the, the status, right? Is the fact that this is what's called emergency use authorization as opposed to full FDA approval. But we're talking about public schools. Remember, in private schools, they've got a lot more autonomy uh, to do what they want to do when it comes to vaccines. So right now, as you know, the vaccine is authorized. It's not fully approved. And right. you, you alluded right. to this. So does that have any... Does that play into not being able to fully mandate it? Yes, yeah, so point? it does. It is relevant in terms of the, the legal standard of the vaccine. Um, but in the end, this comes down to political will. I mean, while I said that in most places it would have to be the state, for example, New York City is kind of unique in the way its school system works. Could they uh, require uh, students? Uh, they could in theory. But remember, there's also the issue of you're talking about only kids who are 12 and above can get vaccinated. So the possibility that the school would have kids who are 11 
who are unvaccinated and then requiring 12 year olds to be vaccinated creates a bit of a situation at the school that would be tough to navigate. And Rich, let me bring in Rich on this. The FDA is now calling on Pfizer and Moderna to expand their trials for the vaccine in children because of these possible effects on children's heart health. Is this a setback? What does it mean for emergency use authorization being going over to full approval? Yeah, you know, I, I don't see it as a setback. I, I hope it's a measure that will help instill confidence in the public that the FDA is is doing due diligence, is looking for, for side effects. Uh, but but to be fair, even doubling the number of, of children to 3,000 um, is not enough to, to, to detect something as rare as as the heart problems that we're seeing in, in, in so few uh, tweens and, and, and teens. Um, I don't think that this is going to delay the timelines. It, it sounds like Pfizer has enough uh, kids enrolled to be able to meet that deadline for, for September. And that probably will be the first one that, that comes forward as emergency use. Uh, I don't expect that the FDA would give full approval to those vaccines with, with th that few number of, of kids enrolled. So parents shouldn't be concerned about this? I no, I don't think so. You know, as a pediatrician, I want to I want to know that the FDA is looking very carefully, especially when you have a disease that is less severe in very young children. There, you really want to make sure that that the benefit truly out, outweighs any small level of risk. And, and Dan, private businesses can't discriminate against the customer for for race or sexual orientation. But they can refuse to serve people who aren't vaccinated. Yeah, it's, Ex explain that. Yeah, it's not a protected class, right? We we, we view in the law uh, race and gender, sexuality, et cetera, as a protected class where there's a higher standard of scrutiny that goes on. Uh, the choice to not get vaccinated is not that, and so as a result, you can offer some forms of discrimination against people who refuse to get vaccinated. And we're now seeing that work its way through the courts with regard to public universities. For example, a recent decision in Indiana came down about a week ago, basically saying that the school can, in effect, treat people who are unvaccinated differently. Well, no doubt this discussion will continue. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. All right, Dan, thank you. And Rich, always, always a pleasure to have you back here on GMA with us. Thank you, Rich. Dan. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.